So how are things on the Daddy Curbs farm? It's hot. It's August in Texas, in South Texas. We would rather be spending most of our time in here, except even the water's hot. Most everything in August in Texas is too hot, too crispy, and not many of the animals move around a whole lot. Everybody finds their spot in the shade next to a water bowl, up next to the foundation of the home where it's a little cooler. You just hunker down, find your cool spot, and get through this month. We've done our best for the horses to give them as much shade and ventilation and a fan to help cool the barn area down. That's helping, but the horses too, like most of the animals, they don't move around a whole lot. They just kind of hang out in front of the barn in the shade next to the water container. Chickens typically seem to be pretty resilient to the heat. They don't seem affected most of the time. Unfortunately, in the extreme heat of the Texas summer, we usually lose two or three chickens. They just can't make it through these hot months. Like this young turkin or naked neck chicken apparently just fell over. We don't see any other reason why it would have died and it's fairly typical, like I said, in August to find chickens that just couldn't handle it. The ducks get pretty noisy when we come around to feed them or to record them or or just be outside, but typically they're hunkered down as well. They find their cool spot, they make a mess with water, then they lay on the cool ground that they just got soaking wet in the shade. Every year in the Daddy Curbs garden, I'd like to see how far I can push it, but most years by August, the garden is shut down. I got a little further this year because of the irrigation system that I put in. I was able to keep a little more water on more consistently, but even still, things are getting crunchy. I did have some really nice growth on my tomatoes this year. The plants looked beautiful, but once that heat came on real strong, fruit production shut off. Tomato plants are getting very crunchy. Basil's going to seed, and those peppers that I never got harvested, I better get to them soon or they're going to end up looking like this pepper plant that dried out from about the middle to the top. I have a few peppers here that will be good for seed, but otherwise that plant's done. The hibiscus plant from the Texas Boys is still doing okay and looks like it might even flower real soon. I don't like losing chickens to the heat. We do our best to keep plenty of shade and water available for them, but occasionally we do lose some. We're gonna utilize this hen that couldn't handle the heat in this trap to see if we can get one of those bobcats that's been taking the chickens from our farm. That bobcat likes to come right out of these woods here and snatch chickens. You can see feathers from some of the other chickens that didn't see him coming. Sometimes people ask me, Daddy Curbs, how do you handle the heat in Texas? I know it's hot. Yes, it's hot. We've been at 100 degrees plus for I don't know how many days in a row, but it's been a lot. Things are drying out. Things are getting crispy. But I guess I'm just one of those weird guys that actually likes the heat. You see, I'm a, I'm a little guy. It's a little frame. There's not a lot here. I get cold really easily, so these hot days actually feel really good to me. Now, of course, I do like the opportunity to get inside in the air conditioner every once in a while or to jump in the pool when it's not, you know, 90 degrees in the water, but I do like the heat. Some of our farm animals that are a little less typical, like the tortoises, the bearded dragon, and the box turtles, you would think that they really like the heat too, and they do tolerate it well, but they like their time in the shade just like everyone else. In fact, those box turtles spend a whole lot of time half buried, sometimes completely buried, underneath these rocks.
For the tortoises and the horses, we do keep one small area of the farm watered to produce green grass. There's just this one small, probably a 30 foot by 15 foot section that we water a little bit every day to make sure it stays green. Those tortoises need to eat green grass to keep them healthy. And the horses, they get plenty of supplement from the hay and the alfalfa, but we like to put them on fresh grass for a few minutes every day as well, just to give them a little something different. I like to equate the heat of our summer to the extreme cold of the northern winters. There's just a season that you know you're not going to get a lot done because the weather's not conducive. For you guys up north, you just have to hunker down, stay warm, put your boots on and your coat on every once in a while and get something done. For us, we have to find ways to stay cool through August in Texas. But, you know, the homestead keeps going. You find a way to get it done. Every year we do expect some loss. We will lose some plants, maybe a tree here or there, like the chickens that will fail in August and we'll lose two or three. That's just loss that you come to expect. It's unfortunate, but it's part of living in an extreme climate. Here on the Daddy Curbs farm, I believe everyone has a story and every story counts. In this video, in the comments below, I would love to hear some of your story. How do you deal with the extreme temperatures where you live? And how does that affect your homesteading experience? Leave those comments down below. Let's have a conversation. Thank you so much for visiting and being a part of my story through this video and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.